Hello, Dr. Lomita and Dr. Salem. This is uh, Ganuni. I'm trying to present to you everything that I did for my link model. I'll start off with um, the loading profile. I uploaded this graph from the sample that I created. And here you can read that the time step is um, the hundredth of a second and the displacement is shown in inches. And this is directly the applied uh, profile that I used in my ANSYS uh, profile. And um, from there I called it 15 second uh, Ganuni text file import that I'm going to use uh, later on to define the rest of the uh, loading profile. I'm going to show you the properties of the columns that I used uh, just to make sure that there was no mistake made. Um, on the top it's an 18 inch uh, square that's, um, that's the outside diameter and the flash thickness is uh, 1 inch thick just to show you what um, section properties are you can see it here and then the 24 inch outside diameter pipe also one inch thick this it may not be accurate to what is out there on the field but it is exactly what I used in my ANSYS, um, ANSYS file and here we see the properties in the stiffness file as I was playing around with the model I modified it uh, modified the torsional constant and uh, now I set it back to 1. And now I'm going to show you how the model looks. Uh, basically it's a small 6 inches tall profile. I didn't want deflections to, to come into play and whatever deflections we did see I wanted to make sure that um, the solution time was small so uh, it whatever is uh, visible here is actually similar to the model that I have in ANSYS. Now I go to the link properties. Um, ignore the damper, I created it at the end just to see if it would mm, make any difference. The hook, most important attribute of the hook uh, is that I'm gonna set a very high effective stiffness. Um, I'm gonna change all my stiffnesses to 10,000 uh, kip uh, to allow for a very small deformation um, vertically and obviously the hook kicks in at um, 1.75 inches away from the center same thing with the gap 1.75 inches from the center is going to kick in and the distance from end J is 0.5 uh, so it's at 50% distance. Now we go to the friction and um, it's actually a tension compression friction isolator uh, that was modified per Dr. Lamento's suggestion. I'm gonna set a pretty high effective stiffness. I'll change the damper as well uh, but um, as I said I'll set the compression and tension to 10,000 uh, leaving no gaps between the, um, um, the tension and compression uh, and where it kicks in. I'm going to change all of the nonlinear property stiffnesses to uh, 10,000. Now I don't know if it makes a difference, but the effect of damping I'm going to change to 5%. Uh, the friction coefficient I'm going to change to 0.1 one and um, just so that when whatever vertical load I'm applying is going to be easily you know, predicted um, whenever I'm looking at what kind of a friction um, effect I'm gonna have whenever I'm moving my uh, columns laterally so for 10,000 uh, pounds of vertical uh, force I'm expected to have um, a hundred, uh, I'm sorry, I'm expected to have uh, a thousand pounds of uh, reaction force. And here I'm showing that I have the friction isolator, the hook and the gap installed um, between the two columns. 
next I'm gonna talk about um, what kind of um, restrictions I have restraints on the joints so I'm gonna show that on the top joint I have um, I've only restricted uh, restrained it from um, movement in the X direction that's because I'm gonna apply a G load pattern uh, displacement and that's seen in the displacement in the X direction and I'm also I'm applying a negative 10 kip load vertical dead load when I move on to the the pins the joints that are connected to my links I'm just restraining the rotation so you can see that in both of the uh, joints I have restricted the rotation okay. here I think I double click it just to show you that um, the, for some reason I saw the translation was uh, restricted so I just wanted to redefine it but we see that nothing changes we still only restrict the rotation same thing here so anything that the links touch have only rotational uh, displacement restricted and at the base I have restricted everything uh, the translation and the rotation about all axis. Next we're gonna get into the load patterns. So we go to the load cases. First I have the dead load and here I showed just all of the properties I selected for it. It's a static case uh, with a Nonlinear effect selected just in case uh, later on I choose uh, any nonlinear properties and um, shows the degrees of freedom. I don't know if you noticed the U3 direction was uh, selected. And I left everything else standard. Now we get into my nonlinear loading pattern. You see that the 15 second. Um, text file load uh, function was uh, chosen. Um, it's nonlinear direct integration time history load case. Uh, because it is 15 seconds and each step is a uh, hundredth of a second, I chose 15,000 output steps. Uh, sorry, 1500 output steps. The rest of the materials I left the same the rest of the information I left the same except for damping and now we're gonna run the dead load first and then we'll use that uh, result to run the time history analysis And here's where I noticed that I'm um, looking at the wrong plane. So as soon as I chose, um, I checked just to make sure that the uh, dead load is acting properly. And I see that all, both columns are compressing and obviously we see change in the vertical uh, position. So indicating vertical de deflection, not deflection, compression. And this is one of the problems I'm having. You will see now that I will try to go step by step and show you how the model is jumping. When you animate it, you see that everything is smooth, but for some reason it's uh, dancing in the middle while the top and the bottom aren't moving. But here, notice how much it jumps back. And I'm moving every time step um, one after another there's no jumping um, in my access file in my access solution 
everything is smooth the transitions are smooth but here in sap we see this jittery back and forth effect that's captured in our output and when we look at the display at first it's very difficult to tell but when we zoom in so for the first six seconds we don't notice anything any of those spikes so I'm gonna limit the graph to six seconds and here uh, we see first of all that the resultant uh, loads are very small and that they appear to happen at very high frequency uh, so the, indicating a very small period it's one of the problems I'm having uh, if you have any idea what I did wrong I would really appreciate your input and uh, that'll be it thank you